Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Bedroom. I was recently asked a very good question and I thought I'd devote a video, short video to answering it, which is everything that we've been doing with the predicate languages recently, translating into it, translating out of it, developing these little models and looking at truth and everything. And I was asked, why is this logic? Or how is this logic? Or what makes this logic? Isn't this just, uh, how is this different from translating, say, between English and French? Well, first of all, on the one hand, if you're looking just at the kind of the level of the language, it's not any different. We have defined the language, so it's constructed, it's you know, formal rather than natural, but the same sorts of processes go on. You're translating from one language into the other and vice versa, hopefully in such a way that you're retaining the same meaning. But the only way to make sense of same meaning is if we can provide an account of what the languages or what the sentences in predicate languages mean. And that's what we introduced the semantics for. If we stopped at that point, I think it would be fair to say that what we're doing isn't logic. But remember back to some of the discussions we had way back at the beginning of this series about what is logic? What are we doing in it? What is the important phenomenon that logic as a field of study is trying to capture. And I put forward an argument, hopefully a good one, that logic is the study of good arguments. So the notion of good that we have been trying to capture throughout most of the systems that we've looked at is one of what follows from what. So given that certain things are true, i.e. premises in an argument, what other things also have to be true. So what are good conclusions that you can draw from this? The idea then being that an argument is good if it has this sort of connection, if the truth of the premises necessarily entails or necessarily forces the truth of the conclusion. But this means that fundamental to the study of logic is this notion of truth and how we represent truth in a formal way so that we don't just have to kind of go peering out into the world and trying to say, ooh, okay, well, you know, the sun is shining, so that the sun is shining is true, and if the sun is shining, then it must not be cloudy and all of these things. The whole point of logic is to take this everyday, informal, natural language, empirical-based reasoning, and turn it into something rigorous. So there's many parts that go into this. First, we have to say, well, what are the sentences out in the world that we are trying to capture, that we want to say something about, that we want to know, does this conclusion follow from these premises? Once we have identified them, then we can construct a language that translates it into, uh, into a formal representation, into, in this case, predicate logic. This involves a lot of interpretation. What are the parts of the sentence that are logically relevant? What are the things that have a bearing on the truth of the sentence? So this act of translation is not a neutral act. It involves interpretation. It involves decisions about what counts as important and what doesn't. So while it might sort of seem that this stage is just, oh, we're just translating from one language into another, translation is never a neutral activity. Whether this is from logic into predicate, uh, from a predicate language into English or vice versa, or if you are translating between natural languages, if you're not doing anything logically related at all, just take a look at some of the recent translations of the Odyssey and how radically different they can be as telling the story if you make different choices about what words you are going to render in, it, what words and what language you're going to take and render in another language. So it's not a neutral activity. Anyway, the point is that once, once we have to go through those stages before we can get to the stage where we can say, okay, we have sentences that are talking about these kinds of things. These properties apply to these objects and not to these objects. These objects are related to each other and not these objects. That's what goes into building our domains and our interpretations. The variable assignment is just something that we need to throw in so that we can you know, make sense of our formal machinery. The fact that we can vary these variable assignments is what gives us an understanding of the meaning of all and of some, or there is. 
So this is just kind of part of the technical machinery. Then once we reach that point, we can then ask, suppose I have a model that makes all of these premises true. What else has to be true? What else is forced to be true from the fact that we know that these other statements are true? That's how you construct arguments, determining those inferential relations. That is what logic does. Now, this actually ties very nicely into some of the segueing videos that I've been doing recently, going from semantics towards proof theory. Because what is the easiest way to determine what must follow from what? It's through proofs. You write down your premises, you've got all of your proof rules. Your proof rules you can both use to derive a target conclusion that you've, you know, you've been given. So if I say, take these as your premises, show that you can prove this sentence from it. Well, then you know that it's going to follow. You will kind of already know that the argument is good. But it doesn't have to be kind of closed ended like that. Proof can also be an open ended thing. Here are your premises. Here are your rules of inference. What can you generate? What new information, what new sentences can you write down on the basis of the things that you've already been given? Anything that you can, presuming that we've defined our proof rules correctly, will be a logical consequence of what you started with. That's basically what soundness is. Soundness is saying you can use your proof theory to derive valid arguments. Valid arguments being kind of the height of goodness, this best type of arguments that we could certain that we could hope to ever have. And therefore, this all ties back into the original question, what is logic? It is the study of good arguments. And at this point in our discussion, we are explicating a notion of good arguments that can be generated via translating things into a predicate language, developing interpretations and models to see what things are true and what things are not, and then asking what is also has to be true, given that these things are true. And an efficient way of doing this is through the proof theory, where we give some premises, and then our rules allow us to generate every single possible logical consequence of those premises. So there you have it. Just a little bit of an interlude to kind of remind us of where we're at, what we're doing, why we're doing it. Of course, we know why we're doing it. It's fun. Next video, we'll go back to talking specifically about the proof theory. So I hope that you join me then. Until then, take care. Cheers. See ya.